What's up YouTube? This is Dennis Panuta for tutorials.eu. In this video, we're going to look at the activity lifecycle in Android, how that works, what are the different methods or callbacks that will be called along the lifecycle of your application and how we can run code based on those specific callbacks and execute our own code in those callbacks. And this is, by the way, one of the videos that will end up in my next course. So I'm working on a Jetpack course and we're still working out the final elements of the course, but it's going to be pretty cool. So we're going to build a whole Jetpack masterclass and it will be released in February, 2021. I'll definitely put a part of it on YouTube as well as this video is part of it, but in the end, there will be a full course. I'll upload that and add a link in the description to it once it's ready as well. So let's get started. In this video, I would like to talk about a very important aspect of any Android application, and that is activities. So activities are very important because basically every screen that you see is an activity in your Android app, at least most of the times. So it's a crucial component of any Android app and the Android system initiates code in an activity instance by invoking specific callback methods. If you've ever built an Android app before, you already have used those anyways, because one of them was, for example, the onCreate method. And we will see other callback methods along the way, of course, as well. These callback methods correspond to specific stages of the life cycle of the activity. Okay, so when your activity is created, there's a callback method that will be executed when your activity is destroyed, the same will happen. And in between those two callback methods, there are a bunch of other stages basically inside of your activity lifecycle. And we're going to see those in action later on, but for now we're going to see them of course in the presentation. There's a class that is designed to facilitate this paradigm. So of these specific stages and in order for us to be able to use them. It serves as the entry point for an app's interaction with the user. And it also provides the window in which the app draws its UI. Whenever you create a new activity, you need to make sure that it is declared inside of the Android manifest. Okay, and then you also need to take care of certain of the attributes of that activity inside of that manifest XML file. So you need to declare the activities you need to declare the intent filters as well as declare permissions in the Android manifest. And you need to specifically state, for example, which activity is going to be your entry activity. So to which activity you want to jump when the application gets started. That's a very important aspect to know. So let's look at the actual life cycle. There are a couple of methods that will be relevant. So you see here the on create, the on start, on resume, on pause, on stop and on restart. And then finally, there is on destroy, which is the one that will be called once your activity is fully destroyed and not going to be reused anymore. So here, let's look at the activity lifecycle in a flow diagram. So you can see here the activity is launched, which for example, means the user opens your app. Okay, then the on create method is called. Afterwards, directly the on start and the on resume. And at that point, the activity starts running. Okay, so you see, three methods are called before the activity is even running. So you can put a lot of code in your onCreate, in your onStart and onResume, depending on what you want to execute. And you can see the difference between onStart and onResume is when they are called once again. So let's say your activity is running and then another activity comes into the foreground. This could be, for example, someone calls you or someone calls the user while having your application open, while having your activity open, or the user gets out of the application, just does something else. And then the on pause method is called directly. Okay, so there is a way that the user returns to the activity rather quickly. In that case, only the on resume method will be called again, and the activity will be running. If the activity is are invisible for a longer period of time. So if the user doesn't come back to the activity quickly, then the on stop method will be called. And if that's the case, then let's say the user navigates back to the activity and at that point, the on restart method will be called, on start will be called again, on resume will be called again, and your activity will be running at that point. And then once on stop is called, that's not the only option. Okay, the alternative is that the app process is fully killed. 
Okay, for example, apps with higher priority need memory. So let's say your application is running in the background, on stop is called, and then after a while, other applications that the user has opened had a higher priority, so your process is killed and your activity is not accessible in that state anymore. So what it will need to do is it will need to go through on create, on start and on resume once again. And then there's of course, finally the on destroy method, the activity is finishing or being destroyed by the system. So once the on destroy method is called, the activity will be fully shut down. Okay, and these are methods that will be called by the system itself. So you don't need to call them manually. And also those don't need to all be implemented. Okay, you don't need to implement all of them manually. The onCreate method, however, is always implemented. And then you should use the onDestroy method if you want to make sure that any data is stored or saved before the application shuts down. And if you want to close the communication to any kind of network or something like that, then you would also make sure that you take care of that in on destroy. Okay, so that's the life cycle. That's the activity life cycle. Let's look at that in an actual example. So in a demo. So see you in the next video. Quick pause. So you're learning something about Android in this video and I hope you enjoy it. If you want to learn everything that you need to know to become a real Android developer, then definitely check out my Android masterclass because in this course, you're going to build a bunch of great applications along your journey to becoming an Android developer. First, you're going to learn the Kotlin basics. Then you're going to learn to build one app after another. And while you do that, you get a bunch of demos, which will really dig deep into the concepts as well as presentations, which will help you to understand what you're learning. So don't miss out and get the course right now. You can find the link in the description below. All right, so let's look at the activity and life cycle using a default project. So here I have an empty activity called main activity and I just created the default project going over new project here and selecting the empty activity here and going ahead and creating that application. Okay, so what I have here is in my main activity, which is of type app compat activity, I have this on create method. Okay, so I'm overriding the on create method and it is a method that will be automatically called once our activity is created. So once our main activity is created, you can also see that we have this on create method log that I have added here. So this is the only line that I have added. This is the default code that you will get. And this is the only line that I have added so far, which is just going to say on create method as a tag and is called dot 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 as a message. Okay, so once you run the application, you will see that this is what you will get here. So select error here in your locket and you will find this as an error if you also use lock E. So I'm using E because that's then the only error that I get usually if I don't have any other errors. This allows me to directly test my locks very quickly. So you can see here on create method is called. That's the lock that I'm getting. Of course, this is not an error. So this is not something that I would recommend to do in a real world environment, but just for this purpose, it's ideal for me. Okay, so here I have this on create method is called and that's happened once my application is started. So let me run this again. And in this case, that's because I have this activity, which is the activity that comes into play once the application is started because I only have one activity. Okay, so we had something about at the Android manifest in the last presentation as well. And you can see here that our activity is in fact added to the Android manifest automatically for us. It has a name of main activity and there is an intent filter with an action as well as a category. And in this intent filter, we are specifically saying that this is going to be our launcher activity. So the main activity that will be opened once our application is started. Okay, now let's look at this main activity and add some more lines here or some more overrides because as you saw in the presentation, there are a bunch more methods that are called by the system automatically. Okay, so let's for example, take on start. Okay, so here, that's the one method. Then we have on resume. On start will be called after on create. So on create is the very first entry point that you have for your application. So if you need to set anything up for your UI, that's the point where you will do it. On start is the method that will be recalled in the case that your application was stopped. 
And then you have on resume, which will be called either way. So if your application was stopped where it was paused or even if it started. So if this activity got to life for the first time. And then on pause will be called once your activity is left. So for example, once the user gets a call, on stop is called once the user is gone for a while. So once the activity doesn't come back to a life or to the viewpoint, to the visibility of the user, then the on stop will be called after a while. Okay, so first on pause, then if nothing happens, on stop will be called. But in the case of nothing happening for a while and on stop has been called, then on restart will be called. Okay, so on stop has been called, a little while has passed and then on restart will be called. And then if your activity is fully closed, so let's say the process of your application is fully destroyed or closed, shut down, so to speak, then the on destroy method will be called. Okay, so that's the general structure. Of course, after on stop has been called, these methods here, like on start, on resume, and on pause will also be called in most cases, except we have this on restart that will be called in between. Now that we have all of those with the name in the log, let's restart our application and see when those methods will be called. You see, so I started the application and the only thing that we have is our activity, which is inside of my project called activity lifecycle. So we see that on create, on start and on resume are called. Okay, now let me get out of the application. You see on pause is called and after a very quick time on stop was called straight away. Okay, now let me get back to the app and you can see on restart, on start, and on resume were called. And now let me close the application. You can see on stop is called and then on destroy method is called as well. Okay, now let me get back to the application. So I have it here, which is my activity lifecycle app. And you can see it starts all over again. So we have on create, on start, on resume. And once I go to another activity here, for example, I want to swap between activities, meaning in this case, I want to swap between applications specifically, not just activities in the same application. But then you can see directly on pause is called and on stop is called. Okay, so I'm just repeating what I just showed you. So you can really test this and play around with it and then just see how your application behaves. Coming back to the application, you see on restart and on start and on resume are called. So now let me try something else. So let me open this real quick. You can see I was even there, I was too slow. So it went directly from on pause to on stop to restart to start to resume. So I wasn't even quick enough to open the application again, even though that you saw I was super quick, like clicking and coming back to it. On pause was called and there was no on stop here. So you can see if the on stop is not called, then only on resume will be called. You saw on start wasn't called because we didn't get out of it and on restart wasn't called as well. But either way, on resume was always called. So if you have something that needs to be run once the user comes back to the activity, in any case, then you would overwrite your on resume and you would implement the code in here. So in your on resume method. Okay, so these are the different things that you need to take into consideration whenever working with the activity lifecycle. So here are the different methods and you don't need to override all of them. What is automatically overridden is the on create. One that is very useful is the on resume and potentially the on stop as well as the on destroy. Okay, except you have very special cases, then you would potentially also use the other methods, but in most cases using on stop, on resume, on create and on destroy will do the magic for you. Okay, so that was a quick demo on the activity lifecycle. I hope that helped you and now you have a better understanding of when what is called and at which point you should potentially put your code. Okay, this will make a lot more sense once we go into specific examples where we will use those particular methods in action. But for now, you know the theory behind it and you can start exploring with your own applications. 
Okay, so thanks a lot for watching this video. See you in the next one. All right, so now you have seen how the activity lifecycle works for every activity that you're running. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please leave a like and also subscribe to the channel. I highly appreciate it. And if you have any questions or remarks, ideas for new content and so forth, please leave a comment down below. And of course, as always, check out the course. There's a link in the description down below and you can get the full course. So for now, it's just the Android Masterclass, which is an amazing course by itself. But in the future, there will also be a link to the Jetpack course. All right. So have a nice day and thanks a lot for watching this video.